Hey, hey. Hey, hey, Periscope. It's your boy Hood. It's your boy Hood. Listen, I want to speak to you a minute about being sold out. Being sold out. Because we're in a time now to where you really have to come to a critical decision in your life on who you're going to serve. <laughs> You have got to come to a critical decision. Hey, woman of God, bless you. Bless you. You got to come to a critical decision now on who you're going to serve. <laughs> and, and just like Elijah said, if Baal is your God, then serve him. But if God be your God, then serve him. Because we're in a time now to where it's all or nothing now. It is all or nothing, and you just got to be sold out, and you got to just say, you know what? I don't care how it look. I believe God. I believe God. I don't care how it looks. You got to do just like Matthew 5, 37 say. You got to let your yes be yes and your no be no. I don't care how it looks. I don't care how the situation looks, how it seems like it is. You got to believe exactly what Jesus told Mary. You got to believe that he is the resurrection. I'm telling you, you got to believe that he'll resurrect some things in your life. You got to believe that he is resurrection and that he will resurrect them dead things. And sometimes, and I have learned this here, you know that sometimes... For his glory, sometimes for his glory, God will actually let some situations, not people, but some situations and some issues die. Jesus, you got to hear me. He will actually sit back and let some situations die so that he can show you that he is the resurrection. I'm telling you, and he'll come up and you got to believe you have got to believe you have really got to believe that God is resurrected. You have got to believe that you have really got to believe that God is the resurrection and that he will bring your situations out of that grave and he will bring them up and they will flourish. You got to believe that you got to believe that when all else failed, like them three Hebrew boys did, you got to believe that even if you don't, you got to get an even if you don't attitude. I'm talking about you going to have to actually be able to be so bold in your faith to where you're going to have to stand against everybody and say, I believe God. I don't care what it looked like because there's some foolishness that's going on out here now. And I'm talking about in the Christian dome. I'm not even talking about the world. <laughs> I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about in the Christian dome. It's so much foolishness that's going on. And this is why you're going to have to get in your Bible. You are going to have to get in your word so that you can actually grow in your faith. You want to get in a church that is bringing real truth so you can sit up under that truth and grow in your faith. Because the Bible said faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And you're going to have to get in your word. You're going to have to sit up under some real teaching and grow in your faith. See, because the Bible says over in Hebrews eleven six, the famous scripture, the Bible said that without faith, it is impossible to please him. Which means that without faith, it is impossible, Jesus, for God to move on your situations. Lord, have mercy. It is impossible for God to move on your situations without faith. And you're going to have to be in faith because God functions in faith. That's the only way he functions. This is why Jesus mm -hmm. told us to have the God kind of faith. God functions only in faith. He created the earth through faith. God functions by faith. He don't function no other way. And he cannot function any other way. And this is why the Bible tells us that without faith, it is impossible for him to move on any situation that we have. 
And you're going to have to get firm and flat-footed and set your face like a flint and believe God. You're going to have to put your hand to the plow and do not look back. I'm telling you, you're going to have to get grounded. You're going to have to consecrate yourself. You're going to have to get disciplined and praying and fasting and seeking God's face and actually seeking Him. And not for what He can do for you. You're going to have to seek Him. You're going to have to grow in the kingdom. Because, see, the kingdom rules over all. See, and you really are going to have to get an understanding of the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says that his name is above any name. Debt is a name. Poverty is a name. Sickness is a name. Disease is a name. Fear is a name. And he is above those names. And you got to call on the name of Jesus. The Bible says, whosoever, you better be glad you are whosoever. Whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He can save you from your situation if you call on him and press through. You have to press through. You're going to have to press through in spite of. You're going to have to press through that shame. You're going to have to press through that fear. You're going to have to press through all those aggravations, those depressions, them oppressions, all that foolishness. You're going to have to press through that stagnation, that inconsistency. And, and you're going to have to grab hold and grab hold like a pit bull and move forward in your faith in Jesus. I'm telling you, because otherwise you'll be going to church every week, crying, want folks to pray for you and lay hands on you. You'll be going to, you'll be going to church all the time and you'll be a Christian that's open for deception all the time. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to tell us we going to have to dig in in our faith. We going to have to dig in and it. And it has got to come to a time to where you just say, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. It's Jesus or nothing. It's Jesus or nothing. All else fail. I don't care. All else can fail. I don't care. They can take your house, your car, anything. You're going to have to stand firm and believe Jesus. You gonna to have to actually put him first for real. You gonna to have to forsake all, like Peter said. Peter said, "Lord, we have forsaken all and follow you." You gonna to have to forsake all. You gonna to have to shut stuff down. You won't even have to shut yourself down and say, "Lord, I'm moving with you. Let it be your will." Cause I'm tired of living the way I'm living. What I'm doing is not working at all. I need you to fix this here thing for me. And you got to get so bold the way you speak to him and say, you said you love me. You told me to cast all my cares upon you because you care for me. Here you go. Handle that. Sickness and disease. Here you go. Handle that. Bills. Here you go. Handle that. Debt. Here you go. Handle that. Crazy relationship. Here you go. Handle that. All this foolishness. Fear. Here you go. Handle that. Shame. Here you go. Handle that. Sickness. Handle that. I need you to handle that. Doors closing on me. All this here poverty. You handle that. Take care of this here. Because I can't do it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. We're going to have to come to him just like Matthew 18, verse 3 and 4 say. Except you come as a little child. Jesus said you're not even fit for the kingdom. He said you got to be converted as a little child. Meaning that you have to be solely dependent. Shut your mouth. Wow. You got to be solely dependent geez, on Jesus. You got to believe solely on him. You got to actually believe that he say he is the resurrection. You got to believe that. You got to believe that he will resurrect some things in your life. You should be tired of going through the same stuff you're going through. Year after year. And these are not different issues. These are the same issues. You should be tired by now. And I'm just telling you that we're going to have to really buckle down and dig in our faith. You're going to have to get in a church 
that's teaching some real stuff. It is a shame to see a Christian not connected to a church. You should either be seeking a church home or you should already be in covenant with a church home. It is a shame to see so many Christians talking about, well, I'm the church. I don't need to be in no church. The devil is a lie. There is no long range of Christians. God set it up like that, that we need each other. And you out of church and you don't realize that your help could be right in the church. Your help is right next to you. And I'm telling you, you're going to have to get in a church that's grounded in the word of God. And you're going to have to be a Christian that is diligent in seeking to be a real Christian with some strength, with some power, with some integrity, with some morals, with some principles. You're going to have to learn how to move in the things of God for real. And it's going to break a whole bunch of selfishness off you. It is going to break a whole bunch of fear off you. It is going to break a whole bunch of stagnation off you. It is going to break a whole bunch of cheapness off you, a bunch of greed off you, a whole bunch of stuff off you. Because, see, the Bible says that anything that is not of faith, it is sin. And you got to believe that. And you should... And, Sure, people that go to church buy lottery tickets. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, me personally, I don't buy them. But I know one thing, that when you dig in your faith in Jesus, you won't have to do all that stuff. You, I'm telling you, you're going to have to dig in your faith. You're going to have to dig in your faith. You're going to have to dig in your faith. You're going to have to dig in. See, see, because there are things in our life that, that see, we'll be doing that will show us that we are lacking in a whole lot of faith in those areas. And this walk here is serious. And let me tell you something. Being a Christian is not difficult at all. It is not difficult. It is impossible. It is impossible to be a Christian apart from being connected to Jesus. Jesus said over in John 15 that he's the vine, we the branch. And he said that if we abide in him and his words abide in us, he said the same or bring forth much fruit. And he goes on to say, because without him, Lord, have mercy. We can do nothing. I personally believe that. I just didn't got so to where I'm just crazy enough to believe what the Bible say. I, I'm just crazy enough to, to go for it. And I'm telling you, I'm not going for anything else but what he's talking about. I'm not going for anything else but what he's talking about. And, and see, I would advise you to go for nothing but what he's talking about. So which means that if you're in a church and you got preachers that's talking contrary to the word, which means that you need to be in the word. If you got preachers that's talking contrary to that, then you may want to do some things. Because see, the Bible says, let every man be a lie and let God be true. Which means that if they're not speaking the word of God, they are lying. And it's as simple as that. And see, and when you don't study your word, you're open for deception. And a lot of this stuff now has just become self-deception. It's time to get in your faith. It's time to just be sold out to God all the way. Try, just try God for, for this whole year. Just try God. You done tried everything else and it hasn't worked. Just try God. You cannot do it on your own. I can guarantee you that. You cannot do it on your own. And you don't need no prophet to tell you that. <laughs> you can look at your own life and figure that one out. <laughs> you cannot do it on your own. You need God as your father 
to function in your life. He wants to function in your every endeavor. And he wants to prove himself to you. He wants to pour his love on you. He, he wants to show you how mighty he is in your life. He wants to show you his faithfulness. Even when we are not faithful all the time. Lord Jesus, have mercy. And he wants to show you his faithfulness. He's an awesome God and he loves us. And he does not want his sons and daughters to be in the predicament that we are in. It is time to move in faith and get sold out for Jesus. This your boy, E-Hood. And I'm out. Peace.